Pfeffer. Great. So since we do have a quorum, I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order and we'll wait for some others to join. So I'm calling the July 6th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to order at 12.03 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public would be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And now I'm just gonna take a moment to make sure that everybody can be heard and can hear. So Jennifer, I'll start with you. Hi, I can hear. <laughs> and Pamela. Hello, I can hear. Excellent, and Dr. Rhodes. Uh, good afternoon, and I definitely can hear. Great, and how about you, Dwayne? Uh, yes, I can hear you as well, thanks. Okay, Alexis. Hi, everybody. Welcome, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Shabazz. I can hear, I'm having problems with my video, but can you hear me? Yes, you can be heard, yes. <laughs> All right, so I wanna begin by welcoming our new director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, Pamela Young. Um, this is a really exciting time for the town and so happy that Pamela was able to join us today. I, Pamela, did you just begin yesterday? This is your second day. <laughs> yes. Yes, today is day two. So yesterday is was my first day and uh, I'm really happy to be here. I feel like I have a lot to learn, but I'm excited to join you guys in the great work that you're already doing, so. Thank you so much. We're really looking forward to having you with us. Um, and we also have Dwayne Brager and I hope I pronounced that right, Dwayne. <laughs> uh, yep, very good, thank you. Okay, and so, we're going to, um, let me just review the agenda and then we'll talk about the order. Uh, so we, first, Dwayne is here to talk about the uh, USDA REPP funding for local solar ownership. And Dwayne will be joined by Dr. Shabazz and Jennifer Moyston to discuss that uh, project. And then we have on our agenda a debriefing for the funding stream request that we made uh, now two weeks ago, I think it was, at the town council. And another huge congratulations to the committee for the $2 million commitment from the town council. And then we will review the Mass Humanities application. That is due on July 11th. So we do have to make sure we get through that today. And then we have community engagement. I've reached out to Paul. Paul had given us an update on the special legislation. Um, I think he's expecting something very soon in within days. Um, and if I receive anything from him during the meeting, I'll make that update as well. And then I've also added reparatory justice principles and tenants. And I'll explain more about why I added that if we get to that today. But as a priority, I'm going to, um, in this moment, since we have Dwayne with us, I'm going to turn it over to Dwayne and Dr. Shabazz and Jennifer. Yes, please. Um, I know that there's no one in public, but in the audience, but can you just call public comment, please? Oh, absolutely. You want to call it now? Well, we have it on there twice, so you can. Oh, oh yes. You. Sure, sure, right. you are absolutely right. Yes, so we do not have any attendees right now in the audience. Um, we will certainly come back to another public comment period at some point if we do have attendees. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to Dwayne and Dr. Shabazz and Jennifer to present. I guess, uh, Dwayne, if you'd like to kick things off and then um, Dr. Shabazz and Jennifer can fill in the blanks. Great. Um, yeah, I'm off mute. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, uh, Michelle, and, and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here with the uh, assembly. 
uh, committee um, and just introduce myself, uh, Dwayne Breger. I'm the director of the Clean Energy Extension at, at UMass uh, and also um, um, notably, perhaps I'm also serve on a town of Amherst committee on the energy, uh, um, energy and clean energy and climate action committee, ECAC, uh, as we say, uh, and so um, also work closely with the town with regard to trying to um, meet the town's um, commit commitments uh, with regard to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and incorporating renewable energy uh, within 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 its town. Um, but primarily, um, the discussion that I'll bring forward is primarily with my um, day job hat on it as the uh, director of the Clean Energy Extension. Uh, I will say as part of that, I'm also affiliated faculty with the um, Energy Transition Institute at UMass. Uh, and by way of that, a colleague of Dr. Uh, Amakar Kar, uh, Shabazz uh, and have uh, had the opportunity to discuss the um, proposal uh, with, with him as well. So I uh, really appreciate his collaboration on this. And then also um, more recently as of, uh, was it yesterday or was it last week? I can't remember. I had a, had a very nice conversation with the town, including Jennifer, uh, but also including Paul Bockelman and uh, Stephanie uh, Siccarello uh, and Sean, uh, last name escaping me, sorry, uh, the financial um, person from, from the town. Um, and basically uh, what we are um, looking at and, and proposing and looking for feedback from, from the assembly here is a proposal that we have submitted, uh, I should say a letter of intent uh, that we have submitted to the U U U.S. Department of Agriculture under their REPP, Renewable Energy Pilot Project Program, uh, where the USDA is looking to give awards um, of roughly uh, one and a half to two million dollars uh, to various communities around the nation uh, to pilot renewable energy projects that specifically support uh, number one, rural communities uh, per the USDA, of which Amherst is designated a rural community, uh, but also, and, and more relevantly, um, also um, projects, renewable energy projects that also support um, uh, um, efforts to provide environmental justice to communities, um, reduce energy burdens, uh, energy cost burdens to communities uh, directly um, support um, populations of priority, including <clears throat> low income, uh, but also including <clears throat> um, populations of, of diversity as well. Uh, and then also uh, populations which or communities that does not really impact um, our region, uh, but uh, regions of the country that are transitioning from substantial fossil fuel workers to um, new employment opportunities. That's not as relevant to Western Massachusetts, but would be for other parts of the country. Uh, so what we put together as the Clean Energy Extension in, in coordination with and with leadership in terms of the application itself with the uh, Franklin County CDC, the Franklin County Community Development Corporation, uh, we have a partnership uh, including, um, or the proposal is a partnership with uh, five towns in Western Massachusetts, of which Amherst is one, uh, the others being um, North Adams, Shelburne, Athol, and Ware, uh, to, and in terms of, as well as additional resource partners, uh, including two local solar companies, uh, Northeast Solar and, and uh, PV Squared, uh, and then some financial and uh, um, um, supporters or partners um, in the form of Co-op Power uh, in, in, in it's located in Western Mass here, as well as UMass Five College Credit Union. Um, and, then, and then also uh, importantly, um, the, the Franklin County CDC itself, which does a lot of work in um, community uh, development and, and, uh, and, and small business creation. Uh, now, what's this is a renewable energy pilot pro, uh, program uh, for USDA. So, what we're um, aiming to 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 pilot here uh, is for each town to develop, um, to 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 locate a site, and then develop and construct 
um, a 100 to 200 kW solar project. Um, and, and importantly, that is not the pilot. We don't need we don't need uh, piloting small solar solar projects. There's plenty of solar projects around that we don't really need to pilot that per se. Importantly, what we're really piloting uh, and, and proposing to pilot here uh, is um, innovative and new business models uh, to support small, uh, you know, commercial scale, but non-residential, but small commercial scale. Um, solar projects on this on, on this uh, scale um, that are locally owned. Uh, two things. One is locally owned, uh, which is not common uh, in the way that solar is developed today. Uh, and second, um, where the benefits of ownership, which are substantial uh, in terms of the economic benefits over the, say, 25-year uh, economic life of the project, substantial benefits, uh, where those benefits are specifically targeted as much as possible to these population um, priority populations uh, that are laid out by USDA. Um, and so um, the, the, our letter of intent uh, to USDA, uh, which was submitted, uh, I think, back in March or April, uh, was well reviewed, uh, and we were encouraged to submit a full proposal, uh, which is now due uh, on July 18th. So we're working diligently and hard now to pull the full proposal together with the Franklin County CDC and with our partners. Um, now the proposal would provide, uh, and, and then we'll get to the specifics with the, how it interacts with the assembly here um, and the town of Amherst, but each, each, what we're hoping is that each of the five towns uh, will work um, independently, uh, but also, also with our um, resource partners uh, to develop a business plan for local ownership that works for them. Uh, the hope is that across the five towns, we actually get some diversity in those business plans so we can um, evaluate them uh, and, 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 and pilot a range of business plans. The town itself might own the project, uh, and allocate the resource, the, the economic benefits to one of these priority populations. That's not necessarily uh, needs to be the case. It could be a private um, small business, an LLC that's formed external to the government, the town government that, that um, develops, uh, may, sustains and maintains and operates and, and uh, um, coordinates the business side uh, associated with this relatively small solar project. Um, the, pro, the, the, the grant itself in terms of the budget uh, pro, that we're submitting uh, provides that the, the USDA money that's available um, is really, USDA wants the large bulk of that money to actually go to support the, the um, development and construction of these solar projects or renewable energy projects. They, they could be other technologies, but we're focused on solar. Um, and so the way we've laid out the budget uh, and each town will have some differences here, but generally we're allocating um, to each town uh, what would be $200,000 of, of USDA money uh, that comes as a grant um, to support the, 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 the development and construction of the solar project. Um, in addition, and the idea is that the t each town would then be looked at to leverage that $200,000 with uh, potentially, in, in some cases, uh, to, uh, an additional $200,000 is the target to sort of double that money. Uh, typically, that would be done through a loan, uh, trying, to, trying to get a loan, uh, a, a debt, uh, debt financing for the other half of the project to amass $400,000, which would then be sufficient, essentially, to uh, pay for these 100 to 200 kW projects. Um, and um, uh, in addition to that budget, um, each town is also going to be receiving, if we're successful, uh, $50,000 uh, to support um, either staff time or uh, uh, community members' times, time uh, to set up uh, this business. Uh, th there will, will likely be legal fees, financial fees associated with establishing these new businesses, particularly if they're innovative, those legal fees could be a little bit more uh, substantial. 
And so the $50,000 can be used by the town to support um, the creation of this of this uh, uh, business um, or to pay for staff time if, if that's it's sort of up to the town. Uh, and then in addition, I'll say the other partners in the um, in the in the uh, project, uh, the the solar the two solar companies, Co-op Power and so forth, will also be receiving some money, uh, uh, twenty or twenty five thousand dollars, so that they are available to each of the towns to provide advisory uh, support uh, in terms of how to develop uh, these these uh, business models, as well as to provide some for the solar companies to provide some. Um, uh, feasibility uh, assessments and so forth to uh, of how the what the in terms of the the, the solar projects themselves. Um, let me let me just say one more thing and then I, I will pause. Um, is that is um, um, mo mo most of the towns we're looking at the the other four towns are really focused on. Um, using this uh this money to then uh construct a project and 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 lo local local ownership with the benefits really accruing primarily to low income rate payers uh either either through uh, uh virt virtual net metering um or through a housing authority uh or a a, a, a low income housing um, um complex that the the town may have some um authority over or relationship with um, what's has obviously been brought up in Amherst uh, with some real enthusiasm and, and interest is uh, is the idea of oh oh let's what what is what might this look like uh, in terms of using this solar investment um, uh, and and, uh, and 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 funding uh, as a, as potentially a form of reparations to the um, uh, black community uh, and constituents within the town. Uh, the idea here is that, um, uh, and obviously, and you know, my hat, my hat's off to, to the town of Amherst and to this assembly for moving forward, you know, so uniquely in the country, I think, except for Evanston, Illinois, I think it is, um, the, the idea of, of, uh, of um, uh, providing reparations, and I know there's still some issues and legal things that need to 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 uh, to get through. But nonetheless, um, you know the idea that that we've looked at with some some uh, uh, financial analysis and and have shared with uh, with um, uh, Dr. Shabazz um, has been um, if some of this reparations money um, is used as an uh, to invest in a solar project. Uh, and that solar project creates rates of return. Uh, might that investment actually be a um, uh, 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 the, the net present value of that investment be an attractive um, uh, opportunity for uh, of, of the use of reparations to create even more wealth generation for the black community, uh, as well as potentially a small business that they can. Um, uh, own and manage and 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 use to create its own wealth, uh, rates of return to then potentially build another project uh, four or five six years down down the road uh, and then where these economic benefits most likely primary uh, through the form of net metering that we have in Massachusetts be allocated to um, in some way that um, the town and the assembly would have to figure out. Uh, to the black community within within the uh, within the town, uh, and importantly, I should say that um, you know there's a lot of community shared solar in in in, in Massachusetts. Uh, these are typically um, third party owned. The large financial returns are accruing to the equity owners of these projects, which are well removed from the local economy. Uh, tend to be um, Wall Street equity firms, uh, and and hence the money's trickling up to the highest. Uh, to the to the income brackets that uh, you know that that, uh, that exacerbate to some extent the wealth uh, uh, distribution and equity that we have, um, the the um, the and, and leaving leaving the the uh, the net metering off takers with relatively small discounts, typically ten maybe fifteen percent discounts on their electricity, with the local ownership, uh, and particularly in this case uh, where we have quote unquote, free money coming in from USDA, um, we would expect to be able to offer quite deep discounts, 60% uh, 
uh, potentially even 80% discounts after the loan after a loan is paid off if if there is a loan um, to um, uh, uh, to the net metering off takers, creating um, some you know much more substantial um, economic uh, impact uh, on those households. And we we've developed some of those uh, financial models and and um, uh, that uh, that demonstrate that that would have to be much more borne out in this uh, business model creating. But but we're sort of confident that that that's what what the uh, financial analysis would would uh, be able to provide. Um, and so what we're looking for um, uh, is a discussion about about this uh, uh, possibility, uh, but also. Um, we are we have worked with, with through through with, uh, with through Jennifer as well on the phone that the town of Amherst is is uh, seems likely to be able to provide us with a letter of support and commitment uh, to uh, engage and be active and 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 uh, uh, work on this project with 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 us and with the Franklin County CDC and with the whole project team um, uh, and 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 um, it would be really helpful as well, particularly because I think, you know, this is such a unique um, opportunity in the country to, to demonstrate solar, you know, potentially solar as a form of reparations uh, um, uh, and, and, and test that out um, that, um, you know, I think a letter of support or letter of interest uh, from the assembly um, would also be go, go a long way uh, in, in, in supporting the, the proposal. Um, uh, and, and again, I just I want to stress that um, this, uh, from from my understanding, um, you know, this is this is not a decision the assembly makes uh, per se. It's a recommendation in terms of how the assembly might want to recommend spending the reparations money, which I think still needs to get through a legal <laughs> hurdle. Uh, but nonetheless, it's more of a of a recommendation to the town council, I believe. Um, and to the town manager, maybe, um, but and 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 you know we're not looking for a commitment in this letter uh, that absolutely the assembly wants to commit reparations money to this solar project. We're not looking for that. Um, the idea is that um, it would be a, a, a commitment to earnestly work together on a business plan, and 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 through that business plan, and only through that business plan would then after after that's fully evaluated and understood. Only at that point would a would the assembly um, and and the town, for that matter, uh, be in a position to move forward or not. So Thank that's you, that's that's what we're um we're, we're uh, have been working on and and uh, appreciate any um, comments, questions, or any um, uh, additional thoughts from uh, Dr. Shabazz um, or or Jennifer. So before we do that, thank you very much, Dwayne. That was very clear and, and very helpful. I would like to make sure that Paula can hear us and can be heard. Um, I can hear you, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. So yes, um, I am gonna turn it over to Dr. Shabazz to add to this and to Jennifer, and then we'll open it up to the full assembly for questions um, and really to hone in, given your deadline um, on what is needed from us between now and the 18th. So over to you, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Duane, for that um, incredible overview. I think we ought to really stay uh, laser focused and, and first of all, uh, put on the table uh, what is particularly the ask to AHRA at this moment. I understanding is, and perhaps I should yield to uh, uh, Jennifer Moyston to perhaps talk about how the meeting went in terms of uh, if a letter from the town itself is forthcoming and then to what extent is an AHRA letter at this stage, useful, helpful, or are we looking at coming in at another point? Jennifer, please. <laughs> I was typing. Um, so uh, from what I understood is that the town is excited about this and would sign a letter of support, but they wanted to, you know, find out how the assembly felt about it, right? Um, 
but they are willing to do a letter of support if that is something that they feel um, that the assembly agrees with. And that, from what I understand, Dwayne, at this moment, you're looking for a letter of support from the town and you're looking for a letter of support from the assembly. Yeah, and it's a little bit unusual for a Amherst because the other towns, it's really just a letter of support from the town. Um, in, in this case, um, because of this um, unique situation where we, we have a, 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 a uh, potential target specifically for the reparations and, and with the assembly, I think it would be um, helpful and meaningful to also have a letter of, of support and interest from, from the assembly. Dwayne, can I ask, um, and maybe I'm just gonna put this out to the group as a whole. Um, I do wonder how beneficial it would be to have a mutual letter of support. Um, so one letter that's from the town and the African Heritage Reparation Assembly, um, that feels like it might have more power in it. Of course, you're the expert in terms of knowing how the, um, the application is set up, but I would want to make sure that the assembly and the town are on the same page. And I see Dr. Shabazz, your hand is up. And then please, anyone else who would like to discuss this or make comment, raise your hand. Dr. Shabazz and then Dr. Rhodes. Yes, because I'm, because of my knowledge and familiarity with the USDA, grant uh, process and, and with this larger idea, I'm certainly prepared to uh, make a motion and, uh, and allow our, our, our group here to, to uh, uh, discuss and, and uh, potentially arrive at, a, uh, arrive at a vote relative to what our input could be. But before trying to fashion such a motion, I just would explain, like to offer by way of comment um, that uh, if you would furnish um, any existing copy of a letter from another uh, rural uh, town, rural municipality, that might also facilitate our work on this end to get the appropriate kind of, uh, of letter. If it's best relative to the grant process, just coming from the town itself at this point, we can then kind of craft it in that way and AHRA can um, uh, encourage the town along the lines of, uh, of executing that. But um, the uh, to my members here, fellow members of AHRA, what I would point out is, is that uh, within what uh, uh, Dwayne, Dr. Breger uh, presented, you have to understand the, the economics of solar um, as, it, in, as it, inf it affects and is going on right now in Amherst, okay? And it is a process that involves generally the business model, the financial model at this point involves uh, three groups. And uh, that is solar, in, uh, uh, solar developers, solar investors, and solar off takers. And you heard Dr. Breger discuss solar off takers. Okay, the, the issue for us as AHRA is to acknowledge this emerging um, economic engine, this emerging economic process with respect of our town, and to look at from the lens of reparative justice, how is it that African heritage people and uh, can, can be a part of that emerging economic model that so uh, concerns us in our response to climate change, that concerns us uh, African heritage people in the response to the energy transition to a decarbonized future for the town of Amherst. And the thing is, how do we merge our, uh, through a reparative justice lens, how do we get the African heritage community with all its histories of harms, with all its hidden stories of harm to be on the front end and in the vanguard of this process of solar, uh, uh, of, of the energy transition that we're we're a part, of, we're making happen right now in real time in Amherst. So I open with that, and I yield to Dr. Rhodes. So I am 
I'm, I'm trying to get my head around what we are being asked. What is the ask here? Uh, and as, as A and B, what role would the AHRA have in relationship to that ask? And uh, and and I, I guess I'm, I'm, I, I, when I was look, listening to the presentation, I was thinking, well, this, this sounds interesting, but I'm not sure what I'm being asked to do or why I'm being asked asked it. I, I, I saw, I heard one part that said something about an investment that could grow over time. Uh, and I was thinking, well, that's interesting. What is that investment? And what does that have to do with the AHRA? Would the AHRA be investing their funds? Uh, and, and, and if we're gonna invest those funds, what kind of returns are we looking for, uh, looking at? And then I hear that a business plan is going to need to be developed. Uh, so when I put all of those things together, and if you hear what I'm saying, I'm rather confused uh, as to what we're being asked. Um, so before you answer that, Dr. Brager, let me just check in here with Hala and Alexis and also Pamela to see if there are any comments or questions um, or Jennifer um, at this moment. Hala or Alexis? I do see Alexis's hand, yes. Hi, um, oh man, so much is happening. Um, so I, you know what? I, I kind of want to wait until the questions are answered before I want to say my thing because maybe my thing won't matter. So I'm, yeah, I'll yield. Okay. And um, Hala, I do not see your hand raised at this moment. Um, so, that is correct. Okay. And Pamela, did you have anything to add at this moment before? So I, um, I did take a look at some of the background um, materials that were shared with the committee. And I do have some questions, but I, I think I need to hear more. I, could I attempt to, um, to, to summarize my understanding of the proposal so far, which is uh, that the um, USDA is Oh, goodness, I think you've, you're frozen. Is that true for the other assembly members? Is Pamela frozen? Pamela is frozen. <clears throat> okay. Pamela, if you can hear us, sometimes if you turn your camera off and then see if that unfreezes you and try turning it back on. I hope, hope she's not talking and thinking we can hear her. That's the worst. Okay. Um, oh, we just lost Jennifer. And interesting, I wonder if something is happening in the town hall since we lost both of them at the same time. <laughs> uh, hang on. Let's see. I'm going to just pause. We, and, form, don't we? we do. So we can go on. Um, and so I, I think though that it would be really helpful for Dr. Brager's response to be heard by Pamela. Yeah. And so I'm just gonna give Jennifer a call and see if this is gonna be sure. a permanent or uh, temporary. <laughs> Dwayne, in your answer, what I would note is um, in terms of the concern, and we've discussed this already, because um, the, but it's, it, we're not um, anticipating right now who is in installing the, no, we're uh, here we go. Are you, we're, we're back. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, and, and yes, Pamela, Jennifer's coming back too. <laughs> right, and, so the, and then the, the request for, I'll just, the request is for a letter of support for those, in, for that endeavor, right? It's, that's, um, <clears throat> yeah. yep. so I, um, I, I do have like a ton of questions, but I think 
in principle, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to a letter of support. And the other questions that I have could could be answered at a late, at a later date, um, which get into the nitty gritty of like, but what I sort of envision as you were describing the project is that this would would work um, similar to the state of Alaska's uh, uh, gift back to residents based on their uh, gas and um, um, uh, uh, resource, gas and oil resources. Like, so Alaskan residents get a check from the government based on those natural resources. And this would sort of uh, be similar to that, except for in the form of um, reduced utility uh, expenses. Yeah, I can talk, talk a little bit about that, but yeah. And I think that Pamela is absolutely on to the on the on to the right um, sort of focus today. And, and Dr. Spaz said this earlier. We have limited time, and so if the ask is for a letter of support, um, and it's clear that we'll have plenty of time to discuss the details at a later point, we should focus on the letter of support. I think we will need a motion from the assembly. Um, that states their support of drafting that letter and who writes that letter, whether it's myself with Jen and Pam or some other, uh, Dr. Shabazz and Jen and Pam, for example, depending on who has time between now and the 18th, um, we can decide those things as long as we are not making any decisions about the business model itself at this time which we, you know, would be a later discussion. Um, but Dwayne, let me turn it back to you to sort of answer some of what has been raised, please. Great, yeah, thank you. And, and, and really appreciate the, the comments and, and your comments, Dr. Shabazz, and then and, and the questions and comments from, from Dr. Rhodes particularly, and, and happy to sort of um, uh, re respond a bit. Um, and I guess in terms of what, uh, what's needed. Uh, I, I think as Michelle was sort of in, uh, implying, there's sort of the, the practical immediate needs uh, of, of a letter of support. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but then there's also, and perhaps, you know, getting more at what uh, Dr. Rhodes was um, getting at is what, what, what are you committing to or what are, what are the needs and the, and how does the, uh, how does this work if we are successful in the, in the award? Um, or, or truthfully, even if we don't get that award, maybe there's a path forward also. Uh, but how do we? Uh, what would be the role of uh, of the assembly um, going forward? Uh, and so, first, I, I think with the with the um, specifics about the letter of support, um, uh, yeah, we're we're sort of on on a tight time frame for that. The proposals due July 18th, but we're trying to pull together letters of support by. Uh, you know, say the end of, of uh, middle of end of next week uh, to give uh, UMass as well as the Franklin County CDC time to pull everything together. Uh, um, we, we have, and, and uh, Jennifer is aware of this, we have drafted letters of support for the towns to use as a template, uh, and that's in the hands of, of the town now. Um, uh, the the idea of uh, the question of whether it makes sense to do a joint letter with the town or separate ones. Um, I guess I'm a bit ambivalent on that. I think e e you could make a case for either. And I, I guess I would probably leave that to the town and the assembly to um, do what they're com most comfortable with. Uh, I would say if the assembly is interested and, and uh, wants to submit a, a letter, the, an independent letter themselves, we can share the town template uh, but obviously the the voice and perspective of the assembly is is quite distinct from the template we wrote for for the town uh, and um, uh, I'd probably you know share that with you but leave it to your um, literary and, and creative devices um, and perspectives that are you know obviously um, best uh, addressed from 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 the membership here than from us trying to to, to draft something, but we can share with you that what we have for the towns, and I think you can get a sense of what we would would uh, need from that letter from the assembly. Um, in terms of of um, sort of moving forward, um, I think as as uh, uh, Dr. Shabazz was mentioning as well, um, you know one of the one of the if we were to you know 
get the award or, and, and move forward, um, then it's to some extent, I think, between the town and the assembly of how they want to work together uh, on this, as well as the clean energy extension at, at UMass. We're, we're, we're um, part of this project as well, a substantial part of this uh, project as well, uh, to provide um, oversight advice, uh, technical advice, uh, and business advice uh, to to each of the communities as well. That's part of the work that we do as an extension uh, arm of the of the university. Um, uh, so so there's there's a lot of things that would need to be figured out. But you're starting from from scratch um, in terms of uh, I, I know the town itself is uh, looking at a number of potential sites for solar on their own facility on their own uh, town owned town owned facilities. So maybe there's a opportunity to use one of those projects uh, as the um, uh, project for for this uh, for this investment, um, uh, or it could be a site that is um, not on municipal land. And actually, in the conversation with the town, the idea of one of the um, one of the three institutions uh, in the town, uh, the two colleges and the university, maybe there's a role for them to play of of, of uh, dedicating. Uh, a site. These are not large sites. This is 100, 200 kW. It's a couple acres uh, or a big parking lot, for example. These are not large projects like have been of, of some concern to some people in, in the town. Uh, so maybe there's an opportunity to work with one of the colleges or the university on a site uh, or the town or maybe um, a um, uh, an individual landowner uh, in the town. All that's to be uh, worked out. Um, and uh, and then the business model, you know, the the uh, um, you know not the, the 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 assembly I think would want to and 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 should play a an active and engaged role uh, in working with the town and constituents within the town uh, about what sort of business model makes the most sense um, uh, in terms of whether it's, it's going to be, uh, owned by the town with some relationship with the, with the, this assembly committee, uh, or whether it's owned, uh, as an ex, uh, private entity, um, ideally in, in my mind, at least owned by and of and for, um, the, um, black community of, uh, in Amherst, uh, and how that works out in terms of the, the governance of that LLC is, it, it needs to be, uh, carefully, evaluated and addressed and, and, and pulled together. And I, I would imagine uh, the assembly could play an active role uh, in, in, that, in that development. So Excellent. I, I Thank hope that, you. that helps to uh, address your questions, Dr. Rose, particularly. Okay, let's uh, check in here with Alexis and then I'm gonna come back to you, Dr. Shabazz, uh, Alexis. Thank you. Um, okay, so I just wanna preface this with, I feel like I, I am good with voting to recommend this, but I think that a few questions came up. So with regards to, you know, using municipal or even university land, is this a situation where an individual can put in money or, 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 or I, I guess I'm a little bit confused. Is this something that like the invest, whatever we're getting out of it, does that come back into the stabilization fund or is this something that like someone becomes a part of and then as an individual gets a return? Um, and then I think the second question has more to do with um, the town and how this would work. So for example, and, and it can come later. Um, I think that my first question is a little bit more relevant to this, but um, in, in the event that the town feels like, like let's just say that they came up with a business model for this and they felt like the stabilization funds would be well used in however way that they felt was appropriate, could they then without consulting the HRA or could they on their own accord use the stabilization funds for what they feel like is reparations? I'm going to answer your second question um, to the best of my knowledge, Alexis. I, I don't think that that would, I think the very reason we're having this conversation is because there's a collaborative um, attempt here to, to work on this. Um, and I think Jennifer um, being in the meetings and sort of uh, liaisoning between, um, and that's why I was sort of recommending 
potential of having a mutual letter of support uh, so that it is clear that, that we're working together on, on this. Um, before, okay, so we have three hands raised. I just want to check in here and say that it's 1247. We do have to get to the Mass Humanities Grant, and I have a hard stop at 120. So I, if we, if we want to make the motion um, to allow whichever people to draft the letter of support, we're going to need to get to that fairly soon. So, um, and I do think, Alexis, that your questions uh, are, are very, very important to have answered. And so if I see Dr. Shabazz and Dr. Rhodes, and then if we can, if somebody would be willing to make a motion or has a motion, that would also be good. So go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. Yes. And I'm happy to both make a motion. I'm happy to uh, work with uh, Jennifer and any others, um, uh, you or any others from the town. Um, the ask here involves no monetary obligations on the part of the AHRA and its, its funds, uh, its current stabilization fund that is directed toward reparative justice, any future funding that makes no claim on a dime of, a, of, of any funds dedicated to reparative justice. Nada, none. Let us be clear. It is about supporting a group at the University of Massachusetts, the Clean Energy Extension, that is applying for a grant from the United States Department of Agriculture, that if that grant comes through, then we're talking about the Clean Energy Extension um, with partners that's already developing would have a couple of million to fund some small pilot projects that involve community solar ownership. And from that community solar ownership, however it becomes configured, okay, there would be certain benefits accrued to the community and the uh, the gist of this grant is that those benefits ought to be targeted to low income and environmental justice community. That's federal kind of language, Enj environmental justice communities that support social and policy commitments to a just energy transition. So that's baked into the grant. All we're saying as AHRA is that we're interested that with the grant being funded, and when this targeting would occur within this small community solar project, that the reparative justice framework that we are developing and will submit in June of 2023 would be prioritized as the way in which that targeting of benefits could take place. Okay, we don't have it worked out. We're still doing our own planning. But, but we're trying to get on the front end of this, that if this goes through and the town of Amherst backs it, that when the project would start to take shape and we start to think about the community benefits and how they're to be distributed, that we would look at that coming within the reparative justice framework first and foremost that we are developing. So we've got time to think about how such a benefit stream could work within our plan. But right now the ask is to endorse this small pilot project and the potential that it will get federal government funding and then the potential that it will come to Amherst and work with some partners. So I think it's a it's a win-win for us and I'm happy to offer a motion. Um, I move that the African- Dr. Heritage, Shabazz, I'm yeah. sorry. I, before you make your motion and we do need the motion, let's go to Dr. Rhodes and see if he has an additional, additional comments to make. I have, I, you know, um, this is all interesting and I think that uh, we should just move on and the clarity will come um, later on. And, uh, and, and obviously the big question of, of ho hovering over all of this is when does this all come together and where will the HRA be 
in terms of a committee when it does come together, because we have a uh, due date on which we expire. Mm. That's a really fa fair point. And actually Jennifer and I spoke briefly about that and whatever structure that we recommend um, when our recommendations are made in June 2023 to uh, sort of administer reparations going forward, um, I would assume would take responsibility and ownership. Um, and so that's, that's a whole other structural piece that we'll need to work out for sure. Um, so Dr. Shabazz, go ahead with your motion, please. I, I move that the African Heritage Reparations Assembly endorse the town of Amherst in submitting a letter of support for the UMass Clean Energy Extension local ownership of community solar projects for rural underserved underserved communities grant application. Second. Second. I think, I don't know who had it. Anyone? Yes, <laughs> I see a second, but it doesn't matter. All right, Dr. Rhodes got it. And uh, I'll pause for discussion. I just want to add to this that, um, and maybe we can just do this by consensus to say that the group is comfortable with, for example, myself and Dr. Shabazz and Pamela and Jennifer working together um, to define what that endorsement will look like uh, over the next couple of days without it coming back here. Okay, I see a thumbs up from Alexis. Dr. Rhodes, are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Okay, and Hala, does that work for you? Okay, great. All right, so we have a motion, it's been seconded, and I'm gonna start with Hala for the vote, please. Lord, aye. And Alexis? Yes. Dr. Rhodes? Yes. Dr. Shabazz? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So that's unanimous. Um, so thank you, Dr. Brager, for an excellent presentation for answering your the questions, and we look forward to working with you and supporting you, uh, and and the all of the folks that are working on this moving forward. Great, thank and you. We'll be in touch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was my last point. Is uh, well, first of all, thank you so much to the assembly uh, for their. Um, interest, enthusiasm, and support on this. Uh, look forward to that. I uh, do know um, uh, myself, uh, my colleague River Strong, who, who Shabazz knows, um, is, is uh, are available to help you in language uh, and drafting or any questions along the way. Um, so uh, uh, keep us informed and, and, and uh, um, uh, look, look, look forward to, to the letter. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to Jennifer for being a liaison for this um, and for Dr. Shabazz's uh, continued work on this with Dr. Brager as well over the past time period here. Okay. All right. So we're going to um, just going to check to see if there aren't any attendees in the audience. So with that, I'm going to move um, toward the Mass Humanities Grant, which is due on Monday at 11.59 p.m. Um, and I know we didn't have a quorum last week and there was a bit of a discussion. We didn't have a full meeting, um, but Jill Brevik, who is a community member that's helping us work on the application, did join us. And she is working with Hala and myself on the application. Um, I'm going to pull up and share my screen in a moment, the application for everybody to take a look at. Before I do that, though, I wanted to voice in um, Ms. Bridges, who is unable to be with us today. Ms. Bridges is a new assembly member that may not, I'm not sure, Alexis, I don't think that you were here last meeting, and Yvonne was not either. So, 
Dr. Dr. <laughs> she, she is like a doctor in my mind. <laughs> Deborah Bridges is um, uh, our newest assembly member and I wanna congratulate her. Um, she's dealing with some personal matters that I believe will be impacting her for the next couple of meetings, at least for today, she's not here with us. But she has asked for me to share after having reviewed the application herself and the letter of intent that was previously submitted, she's asked for me to share, um, I would say a concern that she has that she would like us to address um, in the application. So she read the uh, letter of intent and the letter of intent um, was accepted by Mass Humanity. So at this point, we're moving forward into the full application, which is due on Monday. And what she would like us to do is to um, note in the application or uplift in the application in some way that although Black history. So we're calling this, um, actually, let me just share my screen real quick here um, and see if I have this. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. So this is, does everyone see the screen? Okay, great. So we're calling this um, Hidden Stories of Harm. And um, if we just to review here, um, we have that our project will document oral histories and narratives of, as told by Black and African heritage residents about the lived experience of being Black in Amherst. And then we go on to say um, that history had, for Black residents has been erased. And what um, Ms. Bridges would like us to include is that her father, um, going back many years, um, has been working to make Black history more, to make the Amherst community more aware of Black history. And these first families, as she said, um, have been working on this through historical district markers of Hazel Avenue, through work on the C Civil War tablets, um, and now most recently through the creation of Ancestral Bridges. So Dudley Bridges, um, Ms. Bridges' father has been doing some of this work and she's concerned that without us um, incorporating that into the application, we may be essentially erasing that. And so um, I have assured her that we will work on some language that uplifts some of the work that has already been done, but of course, Without her being here, um, unfortunately, I've done the best I can to express her concern and um, open it up for any questions that I may be able to clarify or comments. Um, but what we really need to be able to do by the end of our meeting today is get a motion approved that gives myself and Hala and Jill uh, the authority to submit the application based on the general premise that we've uh, outlined in our letter of intent um, and to see if there are if there are um, additional inputs that the assembly would like to make that motion can encapsulate that those inputs can be sent to Jennifer and myself directly between say now and the next couple of days. And this will go out to the full assembly so you can see the application questions. So I'm gonna pause there. Um, that was a lot and just see where we are here. And I see Dr. Shabazz and then um, I'm gonna to continue to share screen but let me know if you want me to take it down. Go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, so I, uh... I do you is uh, my screen now on the screen? Yes. So through the work of the memorial ta uh, tablets, the Civil War tablets, I've gotten to know uh, Deborah Bridges. I'm so incredibly happy that she's uh, coming on board uh, when circumstances allow to our African Heritage Reparations Assembly. Um, she brings an ancestral connection to the uh, African heritage community of Amherst that is so vital to the import, to, to our work. This on the screen now is uh, Deborah's father. 
of whom we're speaking, uh, Dudley Bridges, who um, himself a, a veteran, a war veteran uh, that worked uh, for uh, tirelessly uh, to the end of his life um, to get the uh, in a number of ways, a number of areas, but specifically to get the Civil War tablets um, to be preserved, to be taken care of, to be distributed, displayed, and uh, as they are now. And uh, thanks to the work of Deborah uh, Bridges and Nika Lopes and others that, that have stepped up to get them out of the DPW facility uh, where they were crated up. Um, and and now in the Bang Center and and then on from there into a future future home. So that is to note both an endorsement of the language that you have in there, but at the same time a kind of problematizing of it. What I would say is is that and and I hope we can retain the the lovely alliteration with this of hidden histories of harm. Um, in this town where, where the H is, uh, is, is never silent uh, sometimes. But um, the real issue is, is that I would agree that you could change that intentionally erased and silenced part of that sentence to simply say hidden, that the history has been hidden through explicit and implicit racial racist practices. So it's, it doesn't get us into the question of intentionality or non-intentionality. It doesn't get us into the questions of, uh, of silence as though somebody's trying to speak something, but it's, but it's not, I, but, but it's being suppressed from being articulated to simply saying that it's hidden. It's been buried. It has, it, it's there and people have done work to bring it to the fore, like the, uh, the collaboration of black and white veterans of the Civil War in 1893 to create the tablets, okay? Down to the work of Dudley Bridges to try to get the tablets brought out of a DPW storage facility, uh, down to the work of, of Anika and, and Deborah to have them displayed. That's just one example of history that has been hidden, literally hidden in a DPW storage facility until about a year ago, a year ago from last Juneteenth. It was hidden. You couldn't see it. We tried to go see it in August and Jennifer had to tell us that, sorry, they said it's too dangerous for us to go in there and see it. So literally hidden in a storage facility, but people work to do something different. And so, I just would say, yeah, let's just go back to the word hidden there rather than intentionally erased as though it's gone and it can never be, 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 be changed uh, to simply say hidden. And, um, and, but other than that, I think it's important to note that, um, uh, and, and, and what I really want to get into is I'll send you all thoughts about how the hidden histories of harm and the uh, collection of some of these narratives can take place in ways that coincide with and support the outreach work that we're moving towards. And I'll, I can talk more about that, but I've talked enough already. Thank you for your important work on this, uh, Madam Chair and, and uh, 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 Jennifer and others in, uh, in getting this, uh, holla, uh, all others in getting this grant move forward. And, uh, and other than that, respecting Deborah's wishes there, I think uh, definitely let's let it rip. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Um, are there any other questions or comments? So my, right now, what the goal would be um, to get a motion to approve um, that we are moving forward with the Mass Humanities application due on July 11th. Um, and that members of this committee will be working in collaboration with Jennifer Moyston and Jill Brevik, a community member to complete the application and will be taking input on the application, um, which as soon as I end the meeting, will send to you via a Google, actually I'll give, send it to Jennifer via Google doc, she will send it to you um, and so if 
the feedback would be needed, I would say by noon on Friday, July 8th. Um, if you need more time, just let one of us know. And that feedback would want to be sent to Jennifer and myself um, or just to Jennifer and she will make sure that Hala and I receive it. So, um, and just to say that we're not moving anywhere, like what we've already approved in the letter of intent is the intention. So that hasn't changed. It's really just about filling in the details. For example, I'm going to be calling Alexis up and talking to her about budget um, to get a little bit of a better understanding on what we should be proposing there um, and, and things like that. So um, Dr. Rhodes, I see your lips moving, but I don't hear anything. So, oh, there you go. Okay, please, Dr. Rhodes. Uh I have to leave this meeting. A project okay. that I'm to project team leader on has gone from bad to worse. So I have to get on it. So okay. excuse me. Yes. Okay. And I I I assume you're okay with this plan for us to move forward oh, with this motion. Definitely. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dr. All right. Rhodes. All right, bye. All right. So would I'm offering a motion for a second or shall please, shall I please. offer a motion? If, if you could, that would be great, Dr. Shabazz. I move that the African Heritage Reparations Assembly uh, uh, support and move forward the Mass Humanities Grant application as, um, as, as, as presented. Lord second. Please. Any further discussion? All right. Um, and so let's go to you, uh, Alexis. Yes. Hala. Lord, I, yes. A, and I'm an I, and Dr. Shabazz. Yes. Okay, great. Wonderful. So that's been appro approved. Um, and Dr. Shabazz, I see your hand is up. Is that for no, another just, matter? Just getting past the vote, I wanted to uh, offer sure. that I'll send, um, I guess it's if it's, Alexis and, and Heather and, and you, however I can send it. What I'm um, recommending uh, having looked at it is that maybe one way to think about is the five areas of, of harm, to look at the hidden histories of harm through the five areas of harm that we, we talk about in terms of um, reparations and that being um, crime and punishment, um, that being uh, education, health, peoplehood, nationhood, and wealth poverty. And I've got some examples in each of these that in, the, in what I can send to you, I will sh I'll show you. But for example, under crime and punishment, um, we have going back to the 19th century, some instances of harm uh, in, the, in the area of, of criminal criminal justice and, and, and uh, punishment. Um, there are things we can take forward more to the present in this area. And then likewise, um, I can give even specific examples of folks we might wanna target for, for interview. Maybe you've already got your interview list together, but similarly in health, <laughs> similarly in people and nationhood and under wealth and poverty. Um, so for example, Dr. Driver, um, if there is a way to document his story of being unable, when he came here as a faculty member in 1948, unable to find housing in Amherst due to systemic racism, structural barriers. Esther Terry, I've heard an interview, but I think it was lost in a fire by one of my, my uh, um, colleagues at UMass, she was interviewed when she came to Amherst in 1965 to be a graduate student in the English department and could not find housing. She'd see an ad at, uh, at 10 in the morning and call and ask, could she come and see the apartment? And by the time she got there and they said yes, and when she got there at 12 noon or at one o'clock, she's, and they see who, who's there, they see this, this black woman coming asking for the apartment, suddenly it's gone. It's, oh, between the time we talked to you at 10 in the morning and now 
we've we've leased it out or we it's no longer available and and that happened again and again and again she was in later years able to buy a home on pine street but um but the point being these are the kinds of stories of what people who actually are first person evidence that can give us first person stories of the harm of how racism, anti-black racism manifested itself in Amherst. So those are a couple that I named, but I'll I'll I can send this to the chair or send this to some of you working on this and you can consider it. And one key thing is maybe stipends for those uh, uh, both doing the video work, but also those we ask for the video work, even if it's just a gift certificate somewhere, if it's uh, you know just something to thank them for sharing the stories, um, which is which take which which is a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. Um, Jennifer, um, I just need to go back to the motion, mm -hmm. um, which I have as the AHRA although it was said fully, and I'll change that in a minute, support and move forward with the mass humanities application as it is presented, but we're possibly making amendments to it. Like, I just feel like you have to throw something about that there's possible changes to happen. Dr. Shabazz, when you said that, the way that I understood that was as I presented the process yes, in the yes, meeting. Exactly. Okay, exactly. so, um, if maybe we want to note as as the process was presented in the uh, July sixth meeting by the chair or something like that, just yes. to indicate for, for, for completion by July fifteenth or whatever that deadline for completion. 11th. Yeah, uh, July eleventh. So yeah, yeah I, I don't want to hold it up, but but yeah, I don't mean what was presented on the screen, but what was presented as to what needs to be done between now and the 11th of July. Great. Does that clarify that for you, Jennifer? Is that good enough? <laughs> good enough sometimes. Is what <laughs> um, okay, so that's excellent. Um, I wanna give you a quick update to say that I heard from Paul while we were in the meeting and we will have a draft special legislation petition uh, emailed to, I think he'll e be emailing it probably to myself and Jennifer. Um, and then we will make that available to the rest of the committee um, and perhaps creating a packet for the next meeting sooner than later, even if it's gonna be you know, that we're not meeting. And I'll talk about that in a second for a couple of weeks. But it, with that packet being created and with the bill going in there, um, I believe that you know we can send that out to the rest of the committee. But Jennifer, you're looking at me. Is that is that is that true? <laughs> How can you tell I'm looking at you? We're in a Zoom meeting. I, I, I'm looking I at just, everybody. I feel um, you. <laughs> no, we can. I I was actually thinking about how the materials that I received from Dr. Breger could be put into that same packet as the legislation information and as whatever else that you have. And then we can send it, you know, within enough time for everybody to be able to review it. But I wanted to get the stuff in there for Breger because it might help answer some more um, questions that people have or come Absolutely. up Absolutely. And you know what, you're right. Because the special legislation was on our agenda for today, it can be included in that packet. It's perfect. Okay, that's great. Um, so you'll all be seeing that soon. And then I also wanted to um, just put something out there quickly. So the next sort of phase of our work, and we've identified this, and I think Dr. Shabazz has, has really helped us to identify that the next phase of our work is moving toward engaging um, and, and reaching out to members of the Black community in Amherst. And so um, there are three really important data sets that we have um, that we can over the next couple of weeks, and I'm gonna ask you if we can take a break um, to meet again uh, the week of the 
either to meet again on the 22nd, but more ideally uh, the week of the 25th. Yvonne, Ms. Bridges is gonna need some time. Yvonne is not really available um, until, uh, except on Mondays. So I was gonna suggest the 25th as the next meeting date. But the three sets of data are the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts has a list. We have the Black Census, and we've just received, um, Dr. Shabazz asked me to request the full voter list in the town, and I've just received that from the town clerk. So we want to take the data, those three sets, and try to put together as comprehensive a list of African heritage residents in the town so that when we meet again, we can really hone in on how the assembly wants to move forward with beginning that engagement process. Um, so I just, I'm, I wanted to put that out there um, and see if there were any before we uh, adjourn, if there were any questions or comments about that. Yes, Dr. Shabazz. Just asking, so um, we're not, are, are we agreed for the 25th? Are you still checking with people for July 25th? How does that date work? I know, Jennifer, when did you say that you were going to be away? I'm away the 28th through the, no, the 29th through the 4th. So 25th is good for you, Jennifer? 25th is good for me. Alexis? I'm sorry, say that one more time. The 25th you guys don't have a quorum anymore. What happened? We lost Heather. We lost. I think we're fine just, just checking on dates. Uh, if there's more, I don't know. It's 20, the, you're talking about the 26th of July. Oh my 25. God, I love that calendar. Alexis, that it's is bigger, so awesome. it's bigger than you. <laughs> I made it. Okay, but you're talking, sorry, you're talking about the, the 26th of July. Correct, no, oh. 25th. How um, many attendees she's called in? So um, I'm just gonna, okay, there. Hala, we're talking about dates. Can you meet on the 25th of, um, of July? That's a, a Monday. Monday. Um, yes, that would be, that, that date works for me. Alexis, did you hear me? Okay, it's great. good as long as it doesn't run into um, town council. Yeah, so we'll have to do it at like our usual meeting time. Pamela, does that work for you on the 25th? Um, our usual meeting time was about two o'clock on Mondays. Uh, it should work for me as well, yeah. Okay, excellent, yeah. All right, great. So let's say two o'clock on the 25th. And if you have any additional, like for agenda items, please send them to myself and Jennifer. Otherwise we'll, we'll create the agenda based on what we know and uh, have a wonderful week. If there aren't any other comments or concerns, uh, we don't have anyone else in public comment. Um, that was Hala coming in by phone. Um, then, yes, Dr. Shabazz. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for uh, stepping out on faith with endorsing this uh, community solar ownership uh, project, pilot project. It's a, it's a small step, but it's a it's a necessary step in the right direction. And um, and like I said, that that benefits portion, which you know, right now is all very conceptual. It, you first have to get the grant for two million dollars. You then have to see how 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 that all gets structured. But but it does. Um, but what it can say as a pilot project, and if it, if that is ultimately gets associated with our reparative justice planning work, uh, I think can be can be a, a really um, vanguard move for us. So again, thanks everyone for for just sort of hearing that today and stepping out on faith with that. And uh, let's just kind of fingers crossed, uh, well, we'll get our letters in, but fingers crossed that um, uh, Clean Energy Extension gets the grant and we can go forward from there. Thank you. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you for your work on that, Dr. Shabazz. I think it's a really great opportunity. All right, if there aren't any other comments or questions, I'm gonna adjourn the meeting at 121, Jennifer. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.